the uh, Friday Night Light series. This is uh, episode 11 out of 12 of this Friday Night Light series. And we want to welcome uh, the folks that have joined us to developing a live success plan, a how-to guide. Uh, tonight will include a presentation by Worship Brother Corey Curtis and me to uh, an approach for uh, to undertake planning and, and with uh, for and with your lodge. We are recording the session so that it can be viewed by brothers uh, in, uh, probably by Tuesday on the Michigan Masons YouTube channel. And uh, Worship Brother Rob LaFleur also posted on the Michigan Masons website. And there will also be a, a copy of the slide deck if that's of interest to anybody to be able to download I bet by then as, uh, as well. Uh, all participants are muted uh, except for the speakers uh, to keep down background noise. And uh, we also uh, turn off the video uh, so as to save bandwidth here so for clearer transmission. So there are both Q&A as well as uh, chat sections at the probably located at the bottom of your screen. So please feel free to pose a question and uh, Brother Darren and Brother Rob will be monitoring those and answering questions or if uh, they can't answer them themselves, they'll hold it toward the end of the session and Corey and I will try to get to those at that time. There will also be a follow-up questionnaire that will be sent to you following the session. We ask you to complete it, if you would, and give us input on how we make these sessions better. We have one more in this particular series, planning to do so again after the first of the year. And then uh, again, follow-up uh, uh, requests or questions and so forth can be addressed to Mason support at michiganmasons.org or at 800-321-9357. And for Corey and me, this is a near and dear topic to our hearts. Um, uh, just a couple of quotes I came across this week that I thought might be appropriate. First of all, Lewis Carroll, if you recall, uh, penned Alice in Wonderland, but uh, says, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. And another, uh, very stalwart sage was a Yogi Berra who says, you got to be very careful if you don't know where you were going because you might not get there. So his has always had a little tilt to him, but the whole idea being uh, we think you ought to have a plan and we're more than happy to try to help you get there. So I will turn the floor over to Worship Brother Corey Curtis. He's going to take us through developing a large success plan, a how-to guide. Go ahead, Corey. Thanks, Fred. Really appreciate it. Welcome, everyone. Uh, as we know, every great edifice uh, begins with a blueprint or perhaps uh, designs on the trestle board. And the Lodge Success team calls this blueprint a Lodge Success Plan. This Lodge Success Plan is a tool that we can use to design future success for our Lodge. And its aim to help is to help a Lodge map out continual growth and impact for its members and the community. Let's take a look at the five pillars. So the Michigan Masonic Collective has established five pillars critical to ensuring uh, future success for our lodge. And it's sustainability and growth and demonstrating impact of the lodge on its members and the community. The pillars are, which you can see in front of you, governance and leadership, finance, membership, operations and community impact uh, and involvement. Now, before we can write a plan, it's important that we know how we stand at this moment. We need a stamp snapshot or a baseline. So let's look at the next slide, Fred. The Lodge Success Team calls this snapshot or baseline a Lodge Success Inventory. The inventory is a self-assessment that helps determine the current state of the structure. The structure is this group of men we call our lodge within the framework of the five pillars. The inventory has probing questions that are based on best practices or blueprints of successful lodges. And the answers provide an objective measure on the current state of the lodge. The inventory not only shows us where and how the lodge stands, at this current time, but also gives Lodge members a glimpse of where the Lodge could head next. So as we can see, there's a, there's a couple steps here. The Lodge completes an inventory. It, uh, we report back to the Lodge based on those answers. 
and then we use those answers uh, and that report to to build a live success plan so let's take a look at the inventory Fred. Now these things uh, that I mentioned, they we can't happen with the guidance and support and the resources of the Lodge success team. They're available to help the Lodge uh, with as much or as little as, as they'd like to on their path. You can see some of the sample questions from the inventory on your screen here. This is from the governments and governance and leadership section. And the inventory is divided into five sections that reflect the five pillars. Uh, after we complete the inventory, together and again it's based on the answers of the lodge we don't come up with anything we just we're, we basically exist to, to hold a conversation and record um, your answers as lodge leaders to the questions then we develop a report and we can see the report now uh, and again the, the this report is divided up into the five pillars um, unsurprisingly but under each pillar we have two sections one section that calls out uh, the current lodge successes we call them the lodge successes and then we also have a section that calls it out the opportunities for success based on uh, the answers the lodge gave the inventory so we want to make sure we celebrate our successes and build on those but also identify what areas that we can use to um, plan for future success and now Fred, I think you're, you're up next. It works better if I unmute. <laughs> as, as Corey has indicated, uh, we'll take the Lodge Success Inventory, which is a snapshot in time, certainly, but it's a self-assessment by the Lodge of the Lodge. It's not anybody else's judgment. It's of the Lodge uh, uh, by the Lodge. And then we, we advocate that there's a second important component from a planning perspective, and that's to have the input and knowledge about your membership and their needs, the kinds of things that, that stimulates them to come to Lodge, to, that stimulates them to cross the threshold and come back for the Masonic experience. Now, we would advocate, if you look here on the left, there's a couple of different ways to do this. On the left, uh, Hopefully, you're having either individual or maybe group sessions, fellowship sessions, and so forth. From the time a gentleman is a prospect to become a Mason, to the time he's being inducted into membership, and then in the early membership phases where he's going through his degrees and so forth. Hopefully, this is a mentor-mentee kind of relationship, a long-term relationship that allows the man to be gently brought in uh, to the lodge educated along the way, taking his time between degrees as much time as he needs to feel like he's ready to take the next step. And we would hope that during that process that we would get to know the man. We would know his interests. We would know uh, the kinds of things in which he spends his spare time, uh, what's important to him, things of that nature, what frankly brought him to Mason in the first place. Hopefully we have that information and we're gathering that information and keeping a record of it somewhere because we want to build a plan, frankly, around the needs, wants, desires, experiences of our members. But we also know from practical experience that we've done a pretty poor job of that up until now. While we advocate that that's the way that it should be done, and we hope that we can improve in that area, uh, we know that we may not have those data on which to base a plan. So we also advocate that a lodge could undertake, and we have tools that we can share with you and work with you on that you can modify, we can modify for you, we can collect the data, but the whole idea is do a member interest survey, which catalogs not only the demographic information about our members and some of their background and so forth, but key are the kinds of things in which they would be interested and in. again would make them cross the threshold keep them coming back and i think that's particularly appropriate in this time of covid where you know we're going to be luring people back from whatever has become their new normal between march and now november's uh, time frame and so forth so taking us uh, a, a temperature of your members and what they're interested in becomes the second key component of a large success plan. Now we've also developed, uh, here you see a, a dozen or so steps, and I'll just kind of verbally walk you through them and so forth, but these are the kinds of things we would see uh, taking place in order to develop a plan. If you're 
already in undertaking a plan, you've already done this process, you may have your own way of approaching it. But for many people, they like a kind of a cookbook approach on what on the kinds of things that they, they should be doing in order to make a lodge plan. So we thought we'd put it, put it out here from a visual perspective. So it begins with the lodge success inventory. And that's something that can be done on an annual basis just to take a quick snapshot each year on where you are relative to the five pillars about which Corey spoke. We advocate that you take that information, which is essentially, it's a gap analysis. In business, we call it gap analysis between where it is we are and where it is we want to be. And then based on that analysis of the gap between the two, we can formulate action plans uh, to help get us there. And we'll talk about a little bit in terms of how complex does that need to be and so forth, because the last thing we need to do is get uh, inundated or snowed under by a complex process and it really isn't it just sounds that way but it's not but anyway take that live success inventory the information you know about yourselves what you know about your membership and individuals in terms of their interests conduct that member interest survey if you if you need to and again we'll, we stand ready to help you with that in either electronic format or we can give it to you in physical uh, uh, printed copies, you know, in a PDF format that you can print and send to your members who may not be electronically connected. Because let's face it, we've got a whole lot of brothers out there that just, they're not exactly what we would call uh, connected from a computerized perspective and so forth. So we're still doing US mail and phone calls and mailed trestle boards and so forth. And it's important, they're paying their dues just as much as anybody else. And they need as much from the lodge as anybody else who may be attending on a regular basis. So we recommend that armed with those data that you recruit a team of committed planners, and it can be any number you want to include, but we'd recommend relatively smaller group because smaller groups are, rather, are uh, easier to manage. But it is also critical that there's a, a team leader who's employed to, uh, to set the plan, call the meetings, take notes from the meetings, maybe board them and so forth. And we will be glad to help you with that. We can help you lead brainstorming sessions, things of that nature, depending on available time uh, and the like, or talk you through it if you were just prepping for it. You know, we can be a little coach on the sideline if you like, or like I said, we can, we can actually come out and help lead an initial session. But the idea is you need to set aside dedicated time to do this. It is, it's not impossible but it's likely not as successful if you did it, you know, at the end of a regular communication. If yours are like mine, uh, by the time you get to the end of the regular communication, the guys are looking to get out the door and get downstairs to fellowship, which for many of them, that's exactly what they're, what they're coming for. And the idea of setting aside three or four additional hours or two to four additional hours in addition to your regular is probably not an attractive thing. So I would recommend that you choose another night for your core team to meet. And we recommend that you do then define based on the information of your lot success inventory, your membership survey and so forth, defined maybe up to five goals would be a guess because we're talking about a plan that should span multiple years. So it's not just, this isn't just the worshipful master's plan that goes out the door when December rolls around and a new team is installed. This is something that should bridge two or three years to give you a path forward, something for long-term objectives to be reached for the lodge. It also allows you to break down complex tasks into bite-sized chunks that you can accomplish certain things in certain years, all, all moving toward that goal. We then act, say, once you've established those goals, then you develop action steps underneath them. You assign responsible people to take, to take charge of those particular action steps, and they assign time frames. And Corey's gonna go over this in much more depth in a moment, so I won't belabor it. But the whole idea is you know what it is you wanna do, you know how to get there, you've got a person assigned, and now you've also got a time frame associated with it. And you can approach this in a couple of different ways, and I've seen it happen. I happen to be a bit of a marketing geek, so I always loved planning, because the whole idea was plan the work, work the plan. I did it in marketing, I did it in sales, I did it in business development. So I'd be more like the, you know, the buddy in the upper left-hand corner there, buddy the elf. You know, I'd be really excited about this kind of stuff, as opposed to eh, the little shaver in the lower right-hand corner that's kind of, I could give it, yeah, well, Maybe you ought to consider the folks that you put on your planning team. Hopefully they're more like Buddy the Elf in terms of excitement of trying to achieve something for the lodge and get us there. 
and uh, and so so they'll you'll give really great input to the plan. So also in the course of this planning process, you are going to identify a resources, some of which you have, some of which you don't have, and you have to go out and get, or you have to figure out how you're going to do this if you don't have the resources available and so forth. So that's that's also part of the process. Understand you don't come to this thing with all the answers, but you do have a lot of capital right here that you can lend to the effort, plot out, plot out a plan, and then identify additional resources. We then recommend, that's probably not essential, but we think in order to achieve buy-in for the rest of the lodge that you would then take this plan and present it to the lodge. And we'll be more than happy to give some tips on how you might want to do that and so forth. And it usually works out better if it's, it's kind of a visual presentation of it than it is if you just say, okay, here it is, what do you think, guys? And you give them 30 seconds to review it and say, what, you know, all those in favor signify by saying aye. That usually doesn't work out real well. You gotta take some time to take them through it to get that buy-in, especially for a multi-year plan, is gonna be extremely important. Then you get to the implementation phase, the whole idea, I begin to do the things I said I was going to do. I'm gonna hold uh, feedback sessions, you know, maybe one or two feedback sessions, maybe each year, just to see how is it going. Uh, our basic planning assumptions in the beginning may not be what reality was in the end and so forth. We got to modify things along the way. So those are some things we would say. So we say follow this, uh, this kind of a planning process. And again, we'd be more than happy to try to help you through that if in fact you would like the assistance. And just some fundamental advice here. We, we say begin with the end in mind. Picture what your lodge would be if it were and maybe it already is, but as a vibrant lodge, okay, you got to look at something on the horizon and say, this is what I want to achieve. And then you design your plan to achieve that very vibrant, growing lodge that's retaining members, that's MPDs are minimal, things of that nature that you're important and connected to the community, things of that nature. And we say, just as a couple, couple of pieces of advice, if this is not a familiar process to you, is don't get bogged down in doing all it all at once. Again, plan it over multiple years. So maybe we take year one at this planning session, year two at the next and so forth in terms of action steps, but we can plot our goals the first time. The other thing is if you don't know where to start, then choose one goal. In the course of doing a lot of success inventory and doing that line success inventory report that will feed back to you based on your self-assessment, then choose a goal that you would like to achieve and get started. But, the, but the, the idea is let's get off our duff, let's you know begin some forward movement here. And that's the key. So those are a couple of pieces of advice. We would say we do have lodges out there that just get so intimidated by the idea of, oh, putting this whole plan, then choose one, make it simple. Because the whole idea is get some easy early wins. And I think you'll be surprised at, at the excitement and the momentum that you build. So. I'm going to turn the floor back over to you, Corey, if you take us through. Thanks, Fred. So now we, uh, we have an idea of the overall process, uh, and we've collected some information and some other resources, namely human resources, okay? We have our in the results of our inventory uh, report. We have there's some member input with survey information, perhaps, and even observations of officers and members. All right, we, we set our meeting date and we're, we're all together ready to uh, think about what, what does future success look like for our lodge. So it's just, it's important that we don't set our goals in a vacuum and that we use all these resources and also have the input and buy-in of, of other officers and members. So it's always good to kind of check the pulse of that sort of thing. So let's, let's take a look then at the actual lodge success plan and uh, goal setting. First, we're gonna talk about writing goals, okay? The, the, the plan is, is based on, on setting certain goals for the lodge, okay? When we write goals, we wanna ensure that they're SMART, and that's an acronym, and you can see it there, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. Okay, we wanna make sure that our goals are narrow uh, for, for effective planning. That is that they're not so broad that we have, uh, we have no idea what it is that, that we're supposed to be working on. Uh, we want to uh, ensure that they're measurable so we, we know what evidence it is that tells us that we are making progress or completing our goal. And finally, we want 
and then for uh, A or attainable, we want to make sure that we can reason reasonably accomplish the goals. This is something that we as a lodge can do uh, and 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 successfully attain. A fine, uh, and then R is relevant. Uh, your goals should align with your values and your long-term objectives. Okay, we shouldn't set goals that, that have nothing to do with what our, our final uh, vision of success should be. And now time bound, or T, they have to be uh, ensure that we have some sort of timeline that there's an end date. If we don't set an end date to in our goals, then there's a chance that we'll, we'll never accomplish them. We'll, we'll never work and, and kind of light a fire under ourselves to get these things done. All right, let's take a look at the next piece, Fred. Here are some examples of some SMART goals uh, from actual Lodge success plans that are out and operating right now. Uh, we have, uh, First one, by December 31st, 2020, assemble a finance committee and develop an annual financial plan for the Lodge and institute as an annual process using the Lodge Success Financial Planning Toolkit. Okay, so if we, if we examine this, we have something specific that we're working on, okay? Uh, it's measurable. We're gonna have a committee and, and we're going to have a, a financial plan and we're going to have this process that we're going to use every year. Uh, we feel that this is a, you know, attainable for that particular lodge that, that's doing it. Uh, it's, it's relevant to the overall uh, idea that we want to be a fi financially sustainable lodge now and in the future. We also want to do the things uh, that uh, make us feel good about being Masons, uh, so we should make sure we have enough money for that right now and in the future. Uh, and finally, it's time bound. So we have here uh, this date, December 31st, 2020, when do we want to get it done? Okay, uh, a couple other ones here by November 30th, 2020, develop and implement a plan to provide weekly education on the Iron Apprentice and Bellcraft degrees to new members using the lectures and beyond the Northeast Corner booklets and other resources. So this is important, uh, this lodge, uh, even with the, with the recent uh, news from our Grand Master, uh, they might not be doing a Master Mason in the degree in the near future, so they want to make sure they keep their uh, members engaged, especially these new ones that, that might have received their last degree several months ago before uh, the COVID pandemic. So uh, we can see here that it's, it's very specific. Uh, it's very much uh, measurable. They're, they're going to make sure that uh, they have these entered apprentice and fellow crafts have things to do. Um, it's certainly attainable. It's, it's relevant to ensuring that uh, we have a high value experience for our members and it's time bound they have an end date on that there. Uh, a couple others I'll, I'll get through quickly. Um, by January 31st, 2021, use member interest surveys to plan a monthly activity to provide lodge fellowship, either virtually or in person that additionally allows prospects to build relationships with members of the lodge. Uh, so this one here is uh, it was modified because of the, the COVID pandemic, and that's something we're, we're going to find out. It's, these things are not exactly set in stone. We might have to change something, um, but ensure, though, that it follows the, the, the SMART goal rubric so um, that we, we have a goal that, that we can accomplish and moves our, our vision of success along. And our, my final example here is institute a, a plan to perform an annual audit of the Lodge financial books and ledgers outlined in Blue Book Law by brothers who are not the secretary and treasurer, not on the finance committee. So this is this is a goal to implement a process that is by law we should be doing every year. Um, but um, this this Lodge, through the inventory process, we realized that, oh, we weren't doing this. So we would need to make sure that we implement that process. Um, and, and with a very specific, uh, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound goal. All right, Fred, let's take a look at the Lodge Success Plan itself. So the worksheet uh, has two pages um, per, per goal, um, and you can, you can see the first page here. We have a, up in the corner, we can see that the, the place where we're going to write a date when the goal is completed. So this, already we can see that this is a form that we're going to use through the entire 
life cycle of, of the planning process and the goal. We're going to use this not only to write our goal, but to, to track it uh, as, we, as we accomplish uh, the steps that we need to uh, ensure we have a successful outcome. Uh, so we have that goal. I'm going to use that finance committee and annual financial plan goal that we talked about in our examples. Um, there's a place to put the result. Um, and we talk about the, the participants that are, are going to uh, ensure that this goal is completed. Let's take a look at the next, next one, Fred. And now we have a, a space to add in the steps that um, we can, that, that we're going to take to ensure that we complete this goal. Uh, every goal, it, 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 it might need to, to be completed in different increments or by different people. Uh, to ensure that, that all the different pieces are completed. Goals are a great way to get a bunch of people involved, especially if they, they you know, they, we, right now when we haven't been to Lodge, or as much as we're used to having, being in Lodge throughout the year, uh, maybe we need to get some, some people back involved. And this is a way that we can do it too. But the action plan ensures that step by step, we know uh, what we're gonna do, when we're gonna do it, who is going to do it, and what resources that we need to accomplish this goal. Uh, we also have a, a schedule for when are we going to have a review. Uh, again, we might need to modify a goal. We want to make sure we're tracking progress and that we're meeting our deadlines and that sort of thing. So we, we have a review schedule. And finally, there's a place too where, where we can put what the Lodge Success Team is going to do for you. Uh, because we have we are able to provide support and resources and seminars and all kinds of tools and things. Uh, to, to help you accomplish your goals. And this particular one um, can um, we help lodges with a, with a planning toolkit and a seminar to help them uh, accomplish these goals and ensure they have a financial plan for their long-term and short-term financial sustainability. What else do we have next year? There we go. So lodge success planning is all about establishing a culture of planning uh, for continual growth. So that means we're, we're not just going to write one set of goals and be done. We want to make sure that we are building every year and increasing our impact on our members, uh, increasing the high value experience that they're receiving as Masons, and increase the impact on what we can do for our community and the world at large as, as we're charged to being Masons. So it's a living document. It's something that we're going to keep, we're going to we're going to accomplish some goals and then we're going to add to them. All right, we might modify some goals and, uh, and then accomplish those. But um, it, it's, it's something that we can write out our short-term goals, but also uh, start um, after we get comfortable with the process, we can make longer-term goals that, that might take several years um, and, and see several administrations of, of, of worshipful masters uh, to accomplish. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're reviewing it on a regular basis. Um, we recommend at least quarterly just to make sure we're making progress on things um, and certainly annually. And this is a great thing to present to uh, your members at an annual meeting to show what we've accomplished through the year. And uh, of course, the Lodge Success Team is here as, uh, as your human resources. We want to make sure, we want to see you be successful and provide you with uh, with, with all the, the great tools that we have available from this jurisdiction and other jurisdictions um, and ensure that you have access to those best practices and a, and a cheerleader to get you through you know, difficult times. It's not, as Fred said, it's not always, uh, not always easy and it's not always the, the most fun process, but it's a very necessary process. And we wanna make sure that we're here to guide you uh, through the in, entire process and, and, and this year and, and for years to come. Well, thank you, sir. And one, one point I want to reinforce that uh, Corey made, talking about buy-in from the lodge, uh, just share a little anecdote. I and mean, we've been talking about, frankly, about lodge planning for years, ever since we employed Dudley Davis to come in and help us doing multi-year planning and strategic planning and so forth at the lodge level. And I just remember I was, I was involved early on as a Mason in helping our lodge do that. And I got so excited about it, they said, well, sure, go ahead, Fred, you go ahead and do that thing. And so I put together a plan in conjunction with several other brothers and the like, uh, and at least I bounced it off them and so forth. And then I presented it to the, 
to the lodge and I was so very proud of it. It's like, okay, let's kind of, let's, let's go guys. And it became very clear to me that I had done a lousy job of, of, of engaging the other members in terms of buy-in. Yeah, they nodded in assent and so forth, kind of like uh, you know, bobbing heads, but it's not like I had the commitment. So it became Fred's plan, not Berkeley Lodge's plan. So on that, on that basis, frankly, it didn't go very well and it didn't go very far. I mean, obviously I, I, took, I took a couple, three of those things that were in the plan when I became Worshipful Master of the Lodge and implemented them that year. But I could have done a whole lot better job on the front end of knowing what my members wanted to, wanted to do, what was important to them, and engaging them in the process of planning. So uh, Corey, I think, uh, pointed that out very appropriately, and I want to reemphasize that. Uh, Rob, uh, Darren, do we have any questions uh, at this point from the folks? And uh, we'd love to hear your ideas, whether today or in the future, one-on-one -on -one conversations and so forth. If you have questions, same thing. We could either talk about them today or if you want to take them offline and contact us directly, we'd be more than happy to help that with that. So Rob, Darren, anything uh, that's outstanding right now? Nothing that's unanswered as of now. Okay. Well, you've done, a, I'm sure, a phenomenal job of taking care of it throughout the session. So we want to thank you folks for joining us today. We will, we will say that in two weeks, our final, our 12th uh, session of the 12 uh, session, uh, Friday Night Light session will be held on Friday, October the 23rd. And here we're really excited because we've got Byron 80, Clinton 175, Joppa 315, Bethel 358 are all going to go share their formulas in terms of community outreach and what they found to be successful in the hopes that we can craft a practical guide to community outreach that other lodges, if they're not already well engaged in their, in their, in their communities, and want to know how to do a better job of it, I think you can take some lessons from these four lodges because they've done fabulous work out there. And I would like to also remind you that uh, there is a questionnaire that uh, Darren has either posted in the chat window or will be sending to you uh, after this uh, session is done. We'd ask you to just take a couple of minutes and give us your opinions and the like as well. We've got a whole series of ideas for after the first of the year that frankly have come from those surveys. And we're going to plot another session of 10 or 12 uh, sessions after uh, probably starting in the Jan late January, early February timeframe. So your input is important. And we're, again, trying to ensure that we hit the, the issues that are important to you. So thank you very much for taking the time to join us. Corey, any parting words, sir? All right. No. <laughs> <laughs> have a great weekend. <laughs> All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for taking the time, guys. And uh, we hope you have just a safe and wonderful weekend.